Oh, MG, look at that. Here to do another video today, guys. We're actually in uh, Herald Square. Don't mind the shorts, it's hot outside. I normally wear pants and spare you the sight of this, but uh, we're gonna do a nice little tour of Herald Square, continue the little uh, tours of the different squares here in Manhattan. Um, before we start, go ahead and like the video, please. Give it a little thumbs up. Also, uh, subscribe. That helps a lot. If you've watched more than one of these, it'd be great. It really helps the channel to grow, I guess. I don't know. And also, check out the Patreon. I'm not going to spend too much time on all this stuff. I'll remind you later. But uh, today, we're going to be doing a tour of Herald Square. Stewie, welcome back. Well, yo. <laughs> you uh, ready for a tour? We're ready. Born ready. All right, I buy it, I buy it. Ah, I'm getting old, gotta, gotta stand up, stretch the old back. Hey, how you doing there? Well, let's get this thing started. Well, let's go. So before we keep going, I wanna talk about this statue that I'm right next to now. Herald Square, like a lot of the squares in New York, like Times Square, for example, is actually two squares combined. Herald Square is actually to the north. This is actually Greeley Square. Ah, Greeley Square is the bottom part of the triangle, and this is Horace Greeley. He was actually the uh, owner and editor of the uh, New York Tribune, which we'll talk about a little later as well. He ran for president in 1872. Uh, you know, pretty serious looking guy. His name's Horace. Not enough people named Horace these days. You know? All right, how you doing today, Stewie? Hot. It's a hot one, baby. We're gonna try to keep us in the shade though, so don't worry. Okay, so Herald Square, this whole area stretches from down here, 32nd, all the way up to 35th right next to Macy's, which I'll talk about later, so relax. But I want to talk about this first. I want to get a shot of this there, Stewie, behind me. Hopefully it's not too bright. You see it? Good. Well, this building here is the former Gimbel's, actually. So 1910 Gimbel's, a department store that started in the Midwest, opened a spot here in Herald Square to compete with Macy's directly to the south of it. Pretty ballsy. Unfortunately, they lost that battle because uh, in 1986, they had to close all their doors, unfortunately. Uh, but in 2003, they, uh, you know, the, the owners of the trademark got a five grand from John Favreau to use the name in the movie Elf. I don't know if you guys remember that. Gimbel's was the department store in Elf. Over here, you can see a little sky bridge that was actually connecting one of the annexes to the main store. Uh, that was built in 1925 by Shreve and Lamb, who, by the way, designed the Empire State Building, ah, which is right nearby. Uh, it's like one, you know, one avenue directly oh, yeah, east of us right now. Another thing is that Gimbel's actually pioneered the bargain basement idea. Ah, kind of cool, huh, Stewie? Uh, these clothes are not bargain basement, by the way. <laughs> Nothing but the best for me. These are uh, factory outlets. Kind of the same thing, but uh, who's keeping track? Let's keep moving. So just so you guys know, Herald Square is created with the intersection of 6th and Broadway. The last video I did was Madison Square, which was created with the intersection of 5th and Broadway. Union Square was 4th and Broadway. Times Square is 7th and Broadway. We've talked about this before. Once again, Broadway was something that was supposed to be kind of gotten rid of when the grid was implemented in the year 1811. Now, throughout the 1800s, they were kind of making these streets and figuring out how they were going to implement this grid. And one of the things they did was connect Broadway with another street that was Bloomingdale. And Bloomingdale Road cut diagonal, and that's how the squares are created, when it intersects with the avenues, which go north-south, right? Here's Broadway. You can see it down there to the south. And we're going to keep walking up here to the north. But over here to the right, you have this building. It's a pretty building. It's called the Martinique. So this building was built in 1898, and it was actually designed by Henry Hardenberg. Oh my god, he's the guy who designed the Dakota building and also the Plaza Hotel. It was a very fancy hotel back in the day. And here's a little trivia. In 1916, this is where the PGA tour, the actual PGA, the organization, was actually uh, chartered and organized. Huh? It's kind of cool. You golf, Stewie? Not at all. Check this out. Pretty nice, huh? Look at this, they got some people some left some milk and bananas and stuff. I dare you to eat that. I probably don't pay you enough for that. Let's keep moving. All right, so we're walking north now. This whole area is called Herald Square because of the New York Herald. The New York Herald was a newspaper. Now this idea of naming a square after the newspaper was copied a little afterwards by Times Square, ah, oh, the New York Times, look at that. If you guys didn't know that, the, that Times Square is named after the New York Times, you're welcome, because you're never gonna forget that your entire life. You'll be walking through Times Square in 30 years and you're gonna remember that fact, and you're gonna remember this face. Let's go. 
All right, here we're walking again. We're walking up what's Broadway. They turn into like a little pedestrian mall here, but to the left you have the Manhattan Mall, which was actually created in 1989 in the old building of Gimbel's. Where my girl at? Let's keep moving. And over here to the left, you got H&M. I don't know if you guys know about H&M. You know what H&M stands for, Stewie? Huge Mama? No, it does not stand for Huge Mama. It stands for Hennis and Moritz. Yeah, it's Swedish. There was a store called Hennis, and uh, they merged with a store called Moritz. They called it Hennis and Moritz. H&M famous for trademarking and patenting a process that allows your clothes, after two weeks of buying them, to completely disintegrate. It's a very, very, uh, <laughs> very luxurious brand. And over here to the right, this is a cool building. We're gonna be walking here to the right. This building was the former McAlpin Hotel. This building was finished in 1912, I believe. Very pretty building, but when it was finished, this was the largest hotel in the world. Isn't that crazy? Some cool trivia about this building. Uh, Jackie Robinson lived here on the 11th floor in 1947 when he got the call to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. How about that? That's a good one, huh? That's good. This is some good facts. You gotta remember these things. And also, too, in the McAlpin Hotel, Harry K. Thaw, 10 years after killing Stanford White, which I talked about in my Madison Square video, he assaulted a dude here. Pretty bad. Like a 19 year old kid. All right, I'm gonna stay in the shade here before we cross the street, Stewie, for you. Thank you. No problem. Over here, to the, over here to my left, now it's my left, you can see Macy's, famous Macy's. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. But keep in mind, we're, this is the intersection of, of Broadway and Sixth. So Sixth continues up this area here. And uh, all right, here we go into the light, baby. Ah, the light! The light. Sixth, by the way, used to have an elevated railway going up the whole thing, starting in 1876. This elevated railway made this neighborhood kind of crummy because no one wants to live next to an elevated railway. Believe me, I used to live next to one. They're loud as hell. It takes all the light away. So to the west of us was a neighborhood called the Tenderloin. Now the Tenderloin was called that famously because of a guy named Alexander, he was an NYPD officer, Alexander Clubber Williams. The guy's name was Clubber. I bet you, I'm gonna tell you this right now, they didn't call him Clubber because he liked uh, techno music and Molly. Anyways, this guy calls it uh, the Tenderloin. He said basically when he, when he got assigned here, he said he'd been used to Chuck Steak, now it's time for a little Tenderloin. What he was talking about was the bribes. And those bribes came from brothels, they came from all these kinds of crazy establishments, uh, like the Tenderloin it was called. There's a place that it said at the entrance, it said, check your morals with the blonde at the door. That's what it said at the entrance of this place. Pretty nutty. So we're moving, we're gonna cross here to the left real soon. That's a nice building right there. That's Art Deco, baby. That's Art Deco, which means it was probably built in late 18, eight, I'm sorry, late 1920s, early 1930s. You can also tell a little, uh, kind of cool at the top, you see the little wedding cake kind of inward. That's from uh, restrictions that were p passed in New York in 1916 that made uh, buildings of a certain height have to go up and in as they got taller. So I don't know what the building is, but I can tell you why it looks like that. Art Deco, by the way, is named Art Deco after a style that was introduced at l'exposition de art décoratif of Paris, France uh, in the 1920s where a lot of American architects saw this style and were like, yo, this is pretty cool, let's take it to the United States. All right. So I was saying that the uh, elevated railway used to run up 6th Avenue. They tore those down later on in the 1900s after the subways already opened. By the way, the first line of the subway opened in 1904. But the subways that go through here are the BMT and the IND. They weren't from the original subway line, which was the IRT, which opened in 1904. How's the lighting, Stewie? We're gonna have to come around here because this is closed. So, the reason this whole area is called Herald Square is because of the New York Herald. That was a newspaper started by James Gordon Bennett. 
in the 1830s, 1835 actually. This newspaper was famous for like its scandalous reporting. In fact, it made a name for itself in 1836 with the murder of Helen Jewett. So this woman was a prostitute who was found completely, you know, killed and they burned her in her bed uh, in the brothel. And uh, they, they brought this guy named Richard Robinson in for the trial. He was 19 years old and he was acquitted. And it was a huge scandal, but this newspaper kind of made a name for itself covering all the salacious details of that murder. Uh, and everyone just like, you know, gobbled it up. This newspaper kind of revolutionized the scoop, you know, picking up the scoops, getting there first, that kind of thing. And also too, just reporting on sex and scandal. They use like carrier pigeons to like relay messages and stuff. So James Gordon Bennett ends up giving the newspaper to his son, James Gordon Bennett Jr who then brings the newspaper here in the 1890s and actually had its headquarters right here in this corner. That's why it's called Herald Square, it's right here literal on the literal square. So we're gonna pop into this little square and talk about this. So by the way, James Gordon Bennett Jr. was kind of like a party guy. He was a kind of a man about town. He was actually engaged to a woman and uh, the engagement was broken off because he showed up to her parents' house drunk and peed in the fireplace. I think that's uh, rule number one about meeting your girlfriend's family. <laughs> Don't pee in their fireplace. But here behind me is now the monument to James Gordon Bennett Jr. He's the guy who decided to put it here. So just so you know, the Herald was here uh, for a little while. Uh, they actually moved it and tore down this building in 1920s. Uh, it merged with the New York Tribune in 1924, remember Horace Greeley. Uh, but this used to be on top. That's Minerva, goddess of wisdom. And uh, on top you got these two owls. So this guy was obsessed with owls. He actually had owls all around the entire building, like 22 of them. And he actually had made plans with Stanford White, who was murdered by Harry K. Thaw, look at that, tying it all together. Uh, to build a, a mausoleum for him that was actually going to be a 125 foot owl suspended like you know 200 feet total on, with a base and pedestal in Washington Heights but only because because uh, uh, Stanford White was killed by Harry K. Thaw did those plans get squashed. This guy was obsessed with owls. So but you can't guess what his uh, favorite band was Stewie. The no oh. Pretty good right? Good. Thank you. Anyways, you have those two guys. Those are typesetters. The typesetters are the people who put all the type for you know printing the paper. So James Gordon Bennett Jr. also didn't plan to be here very long. He actually only signed a 30-year lease when they built this building because he saw the writing on the wall. New York was moving north. I've talked about this in the last couple of videos because uh, you know the expansion kept going north. He actually said uh, when he signed the lease and, and he said in 30 years uh, the Herald will be in Harlem and I'll be in hell. So he kind of knew what was going on. Uh, I'll see you there, Gordon. All right, well, that's Minerva. Oh, by the way, Minerva is also on the transportation uh, monument at uh, Grand Central. He's on the transportation sculpt, sculpt, uh, sculpture. There you go, that's the word I was looking for. The one that was actually designed by uh, Jules Félix Couton. He was a French guy, one of the very famous uh, sculptors at the turn of the 20th century. But what's interesting about that is this guy refused to come to New York to put the statue there. He actually had it all just remade here uh, without him because he didn't want to come to New York and have his sensibility corrupted by the awful New York architecture. How about that? What, a, what an asshole, huh? But you know what? Joke's on him because uh, he's dead. So, see you later, Jules kind of crazy too I was telling you guys about here the McAlpin right right in front of me how Harry K Thaw I mean this guy was free is 10 years after killing Stanford White and he was already running around able to assault this guy in this hotel and then nuts and then nuts that this guy who committed such horrible crime was able to just walk around free without any kind of repercussion being able to possibly commit crimes again in this country in the United States where's the justice in that but I digress. All right, here we go. Let's go over here next to Macy's. Oh, also too, look, check it out, Stewie. You see that, can you see that behind me? It might be blown out a little. Empire State Building, baby. I'll get it behind you for this one. You can see it there. Empire State Building, built in 1931. I talked about it briefly in the uh, Madison Square video. 
pretty cool view. We're really very, very close to it. But uh, yeah, all right, that's enough. I'll cover that in a different video. Also too, at 32nd, where we were earlier, that's Koreatown. If you take a left over there at 32nd, you get into Koreatown. And in Koreatown, uh, we'll cover that in a different video too, but that's over there uh, to the left. Okay, we're gonna go into some light here, Stewie, so careful. Now you got this behind me. You see that big boy? I was calling the building a big boy, not you, Stewie, don't worry. Okay. Yeah, anyways, this building here, this house is Macy's. Now this has been here since 1902. Macy's, however, dates back to 1858. A man named Roland H. Macy, Roland Hussey Macy, started Macy's, uh, actually further downtown, uh, near closer to what is today Union Square. Uh, but they moved it here in 1902. In fact, that star, the famous Macy star, it's a red star, it actually comes from a tattoo that he got while he was on a whaling expedition. This guy was a big adventurer. He got a tattoo on his hand and used that as the actual logo. Uh, it's probably a good thing that we don't use logos now that actually derive from tattoos that the owners have because then every gym in America would have tribal armband logos. But this here is, uh, the, was, when it was built, the largest uh, department store in the world. Uh, it's got over 1.1 million square feet of retail space, not including all the offices and everything. Uh, but it was actually owned by Ida and Isidore Strauss for a while, and they famously died on the Titanic in 1912. That's right. It's crazy, right? In fact, in the movie, if you look at the movie, there's this, I talked about this in the Titanic video I did, by the way. All right, anyways, in the movie, there's a scene where, the, where an old couple is in their stateroom and the water's rushing in, that's supposed to be them. They actually cut the lines from the movie of theirs uh, and the woman refused to get on a life raft because that's what they say happened. Uh, Ida Strauss refused to get on a life raft so she wouldn't leave her husband behind. That all happened there. Anyways, this was also the setting for the movie Miracle on 34th Street, uh, which was a story about Santa Claus here in the 1940s. Um, Oh yeah, also too, if you go further down here on 34th Street, you eventually get to Penn Station, which I also talked about in a video because they demolished the beautiful version of it and they uh, built it all underground. Madison Square Garden is there, the new one. So you should check out the uh, video about Penn Station. Crazy story. It's actually one of the reasons why we have historic buildings here in New York to begin with. Uh, oh, also too, I forgot to mention this. So behind me over here is this building. This is the Marbridge Building. It's another very pretty building, 1909. The manager of the New York Giants, the baseball team back in the day, used to run a pool room down there, which is pretty cool. Uh, also, too, down here you're going to see uh, signs for the PATH train. The PATH train is actually the subway train that leads from uh, New Jersey over to New York City. It actually opened and began service in 1908. They had been trying to dig a tunnel under the Hudson River for years and years and it had been blocked and big problems. But in 1908 they finally started service from uh, New York, I'm sorry, from New Jersey over to 19th Street in Manhattan and it's developed since. It's run separately though. By the way, PATH stands for Port Authority Trans Hudson Corp. There you go, there's a mouthful. All right, well, we've covered a lot here. Got to talk about all this area. There's not really, I guess, a ton of places to walk here and it is hot as hell, baby. And we're out here sweating. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, here, come over here, Stewie. Let's get this in the background. I think, uh, this is Macy's. You can try to go inside, but they'll kick us out. If I was, I guess, one of those prankster, you know, YouTube video makers, maybe I'd go in right now and, you know, and do that, but I'm better than that. So uh, I'll try on my own time. What the hell am I talking about? Let's keep this focused here. I think, uh, I think we're pretty much done, guys. If you enjoyed the video, um, you know, like, subscribe, please. Also check out my Patreon, that helps a lot. I was fun, these things helps keep me doing them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish out the squares, I think, with a Times Square video. Even though I did a Times Square video, you can check that out, it's a little old, uh, and I can cram some more information into it, so I may do it again. But uh, yeah, this is uh, Herald Square. Pretty quick video, got done here very quickly. So maybe that's what you'll remember, that Herald Square is actually named after the New York Herald, which was a newspaper. And I know I've even thrown around that word a lot. For any of you guys that are under 23 years old, a newspaper is just, it's like a, a meme that's 120,000 words long. Uh, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. That's a newspaper. Read them, baby, instead of your phone all the time. It's funny, we like, you look at old pictures like the subway, everyone's looking, reading newspapers. Now you're on the you know, subway and everyone's just looking at their phones. And I'll tell you what, they're not writing letters to their congressmen, okay? Playing games and stuff. All right, I'm digressing. This is crazy. Listen to me preach. <laughs> Get off your soapbox, Tom. All right, well, the video's uh, done. Uh, how are you feeling, Stewie? We do a good job? Yeah. Did you learn some cool stuff? Yes, I did. Good. That's all that matters, that you learned something. Because then everyone will learn vicariously through you. 
You're my gauge, baby. <sighs> All right, well, that's pretty much it, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, me and Stu are gonna go have a hot dog or something. Uh, all right, I'm rambling. I gotta get out of here. <clears throat> See y'all later. That's it.